O God among us, come. We sing verse 1 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. day spring come. This first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1 through 2. For there will be no gloom for her who is in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the Lord of Zebulun and the land of Zephtali. But in the later time he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nation, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelled in the land of deep darkness, of, on them has light shone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star, star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, sum Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had happened. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold franken and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing verse 6. Oh, come thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing night. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and 
Desire of nations come. The third reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and of peace there will be no end. Of the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Ephesians chapter 2. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together in a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greetings greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing verse 7. Oh, come desire of nation fire In wonder hearts of all mankind Bid thou our sad division see And be thyself a king of peace Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to be holy his right. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. O desire of nations, come. In 2004, I took an Amtrak from Whitefish, Montana to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
Um, it was my first real experience on an Amtrak. I was taking the Empire Builder from, uh, like I said, from Glacier National Park, and it was especially cool because uh, there was a car on there that had uh, a dome top that was all glass, and you could just take in the scenery of the mountains, you know, hearing the uh, clickety-clack of the, of the train, uh, kind of feeling the sway, and just uh, seeing the beauty of God's creation all in one spot was just really, uh, really nice and soothing. But it, it didn't last very long. Uh, you see, one, uh, it didn't take very long to get through the Rockies. And once you got through the Rockies, I mean, it's pretty much flat all the way to get to Pennsylvania. Um, and so uh, one ugly lesson I learned on the Amtrak is it's not like riding on the interstate. They don't tell you when you get to the next state, so they don't say, welcome to North Dakota. And if you've ever been to eastern Montana before, or North Dakota, they look the same. So unless you have something that tells you that you're in North Dakota, you don't know. And so I was starting to panic at this point because the sun is starting to set, and I feel like we're still in Montana. And I'm like, we are never going to get to our destination Depression had set in by now. I felt like I was in the twilight zone, except for this was real life. I was distressed and hungry as we headed east into the dark abyss, never to reach North Dakota. One stop, two stops. I didn't recognize the names of any of the towns that we were going in. I didn't know whether it was Montana or North Dakota. On and on the train moved, and I never had any idea if we'd reach our destination. And then there it was. I could hear the angels singing. We were in Minot, North Dakota. I knew Minot. I don't know, I don't know how I know that Minot is in North Dakota. Has anybody ever been to Minot or heard of Minot? Okay, we've got a couple of people. Okay. So there's not much there if you haven't been there before. Um, I think I might have seen a Walmart. I know north of the city there's an Air Force base, but there's not much there. And it's about 600 miles east of the Rockies. Nothing special about that town, really. Um, just a, a regular Midwestern town. But at least I knew at that point that we were in North Dakota and we were making progress, so I could rest easy. Isaiah 8, starting at verse 21, Distress and hungry, they will roam the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged, and looking upward will curse their king and their god. Then they will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom. And they will be thrust into utter darkness. Has something like that ever happened to you? Maybe not a train ride, but maybe a real life event that just kept seeming like more and more bad news was being heaped, heaped on you. And everything in your outlook was distress and darkness and gloom. No matter what, the bad and the evil will just not end. Things had gotten so bad in Israel and Judah that God promised the Assyrian army would take Damascus and Samaria and plunder them. The Assyrians were one of the most ruthless armies ever in existence in size and scope of things that they would do. For example, the way I look at it is probably the worst group of people might be ISIS. But let's make them the largest military on the planet, okay? And then just make it, think about ISIS and then think about more ruthless than that. And that's what we had with Assyria. Their reputation preceded them. People knew what Assyrians uh, would do. They would take their captives oftentimes and remove them to the remotest parts of their empire. And then those who were left, if they survived, were defiled thrust into utter darkness. And this is how the Samaritans came to be, the remnants, the leftovers of Israel. First, this nation of Israel was bowled over by the Assyrians, then by the Babylonians, followed by the Persians, and finally the Romans. For 800 years, the, peop the people of Hebrew nations were under siege. For more than half of that, God was silent. Distress, darkness, and fearful gloom. In the line which in the wardrobe, C.S. Lewis depicts this as it's always winter but never Christmas, or as I call it, always Montana and never North Dakota, 
or as Isaiah says, perpetual darkness, always midnight but never dawn. But as with all prophets, there's always a promise of the coming Savior, the promise of dawn. Isaiah 9 says, nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Whatever gloom and distress they'd faced, they had a hope that one day it would be no more. For those residing in the land of the shadow of death, light has dawned. A promise. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Peace is the desire of the nations. A promise of the Prince of Peace to all nations has come. And this promise is for you too. Whatever journey you are on, wherever you are in your journey, living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For you, a child is born. For you, a son is given. For you, the Prince of Peace. Read with me. O come, desire of nations, to one heart of all mankind, bid thou our sad division cease, and be thyself our King of Peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, come to thee, O Israel. O desire of nations, come. In Jesus' name, amen. In you, O Lord, we rejoice and trust. Give us joy at all times and make us reasonable in word and deed, that all would recognize our Christian confidence in your Son's advent. Lord, in your mercy, Holy Father, lead all pastors to regard themselves as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. May they be found trustworthy as they carry out their duties. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, comfort persecuted Christians in every hardship. Embolden them to persevere and continue to confess your blessed and saving word, which stands forever. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, the prophet Isaiah looked for the day when blind eyes would see, deaf ears would hear, lame legs would leap, and mute tongues would sing. Until the final day of restoration, draw near to all who have special needs and give them healing according to your gracious will. Bind up those who grieve that they may look for the resurrection of all flesh. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for being here for our third and final Wednesday Advent service. Thank you to Caleb for preaching. Thank you for that uh, wonderful message. North Dakotans aren't going to be very happy about that. <laughs> but otherwise, it was really good. <laughs> I get the idea. Flat from, you said, from, Rockies to from the Rockies to Pennsylvania. Okay. I guess so, yeah. Um, thank you to all the, the Salters who came here to participate uh, above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, Salters will be leading the worship on Wednesday, so you'll see all of us back up here again. And then Christmas Eve is right around the corner. We have our beautiful Christmas Eve candlelight service planned, and then Christmas Day is Sunday, so 9.30 in the morning we'll celebrate Christmas with Holy Communion. Are there any other announcements? Are you going to have ESL next Wednesday? Do you know? Is Yes? Okay, so ESL next Wednesday will be at 7 for those who are involved in that. If there are no other announcements, uh, thank you for coming. Four.